Welcome to World Med School. This is Dr. Gerald Elner. I will make a presentation on TB diagnostics. The diagnosis of classical pulmonary tuberculosis can be relatively straightforward due to the characteristic upper lobe cavitary lung disease. Sputum from patients such as this often have abundant numbers of acid fast bacilli. Uh, re relatively simple test with a rapid uh, endpoint. However, a positive smear requires between 1,000 and 10,000 bacteria. You need to examine at least two smears, and there may be administrative problems even reporting positive smears back to clinicians. The yield of AFB smear can be increased by using fluorescence microscopy or by concentrating or sedimenting the sputum. The occurrence or concurrence of HIV infection in TB further complicates diagnosis because the chest x-ray may be atypical with highly remediastinal lymph nodes or pleural effusions not shown here. And particularly in late HIV, the proportion of patients that are pulmonary with positive AFB smears is much decreased, so smear becomes less sensitive. In terms of increasing sensitivity with resonance microscopy, an LED modification has recently been endorsed and widely used, but this is still uh, not totally adequate, particularly in a setting where HIV occurs frequently. Chest x-ray, if available, uh, can be useful if typical Unfortunately, there's great variation in inter-observer agreement. Recently, there's renewed interest in digital x-rays as an, a, a, mo a diagnostic modality in, in TB. And where advanced imaging, imaging is available, uh, for example, the CT scan can be a good way to diagnose uh, disseminated or miliary tuberculosis. Unfortunately, TB occurs in settings where resources usually are limited and advanced technology is not available. A TB culture is very sensitive. It's the gold standard to confirm the diagnosis. And all specimens, even the smear negative, should be cultured. The growth requires four to eight weeks on solid medium and one to two weeks on liquid medium. Limitation is cost and availability uh, of culture. So we need new diagnostics. Smear is technically difficult and insensitive. Culture followed by drug susceptibility testing is expensive, slow, and not useful in routine um, decision making. Uh, further, the development of HIV infection and the spread of drug resistant strains makes it imperative that we have more broadly available drug susceptibility testing. Lyme probe assays have been introduced widely and allow one to look at mutations leading to rifampin resistance, RPOB gene, or isoniazid resistance, CACHI, or isoniazid A uh, mutations. Uh, while it's possible to work directly from smear positive cases, uh, usually there is intermediate culture. The technology is complicated and uh, therefore not routinely available, particularly at point of care. What's been transformative have been the widespread use of uh, the gene expert. Uh, this is a device uh, produced by Cepheid in which sputum is mixed two to one with sample um, with a liquefying reagent and a cartridge is put in essentially a robot within uh, uh, two hours one has the diagnosis of TB and also whether there's rifampin susceptibility or resistance. One sample identifies 98 percent of the smear positive and 73 percent of the smear negative cases. Specificity is almost 100%, in part because the genes being amplified are RPOB, 
which is relatively restricted to M tuberculosis. And sensitivity for the diagnosis of MDRTB is excellent as well. But we still need a more point of care device. There are several prototypes that have been produced. They tend to be smaller, less expensive equipment than GeneXpert, but are limited still by the requirement to amplify genes, etc. Uh, that is the sample preparation requirement. We also need a rapid diagnostic for TB in HIV infection, where there are more SME negative cases, more extrapulmonary TB, and we know there's a higher case fatality rate, particularly if introduction of ART antiretroviral therapy is delayed. We recently have completed, completed a study of a liporabinomannan in urine, which is a dipstick test shown here as a positive result. And the accuracy of the determined TB lamb lateral flow is about 36.8 percent overall, but it's extremely uh, reliable or more reliable if CD4 count is less than 50 in the, in the presence of HIV infection uh, and highly reliable with a sensitivity of over 50 percent in the CD4 strata from 50 to 100. So this is a, a very promising point of care test, particularly when combined with smear. So in smear negative pulmonary TB cases, expert has a sensitivity of 62%, uh, urine lamb a sensitivity of 45%, and if you do uh, if you do lamb and also gene expert, you have a combined sensitivity of 79%. Because of the cost of gene expert, it would be important to have a screening test to enrich TB suspects for those more likely to have confirmable TB. The cost of the cartridge is $10, even at carefully negotiated prices, and the cost per test is $14 to $17. A screening test, for example, in, in TB suspects with a 5% uh, a priori prevalence of actual tuberculosis, uh, which was 85 to 100 percent sensitive, comparable to gene expert, would have to be at least 50 percent specific, and a cost less than half of gene expert to be cost effective. We ultimately may have a screening test followed by confirmatory test in a TB, as in the past we depended on in HIV diagnostics. We needed a rapid diagnostic for drug-resistant tuberculosis, and second-generation expert cartridges are being studied with this in mind. We need a diagnostic for extrapulmonary TB, pediatric TB, and patients with latent TB infection at risk of progression to active TB. There are several promising approaches. The entire immunoproteome of mycobacterium tuberculosis has been probed with sera from adults and the height of the bar shows antigens frequently recognized, so a multiplex serodiagnostic is possible. The transcriptome of MTB uh, in infection disease has been studied, and on the right you can see that patients with TB disease look very different from most patients with latent TB infection, although there are four uh, shown here to the left of the TB cases that have more a pattern uh, consistent with actual TB. So perhaps this could be the basis for a marker of LTBI, latent TB infection at risk of disease progression. So we need uh, many things still, although there have been remarkable advances. We need a point of care nucleic acid amplification test. We need a screening test um, to enrich before more expensive confirmatory tests. We need a diagnostic for activity of LTBI. Uh, this is an overview of where we stand now in TB diagnostics. Some of the data you've seen are not yet published, um, but certainly 
the advent of gene expert and new technologies re represents a breakthrough in the potential for TB control. Thank you for your attention.